Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the YouTube world, CJ Rose is back in the building. Welcome back to the channel. As we got some TNA playing in the background, but we're not here to talk about TNA. We're here to talk about WWE because this weekend is a big weekend. At SummerSlam, the biggest party of the summer is going down. In Cleveland, this is for you. Cleveland, Ohio, OH. Yeah, I'm going crazy, I know. <laughs> I'm going crazy, but it's all good because I'm hype. The card is looking good. It, it was built very well. The buildups have been looking good. I, I'm excited for this card. We're going to get into it. Seven matches. Seven of them things. Let's hop on to it. All right, we're going to kick it off with the Intercontinental Championship on the line in a rematch from Money in the Bank as Sami Zayn will defend against Braun Breaker. Now, I'll be the first to admit it. I thought at Money in the Bank, we were going to crown the new Intercontinental Champion. Braun Breaker was about to go in there and break Sami in half, all that. Nope, it didn't happen. Braun Breaker's inexperienced. Braun Breaker lost focus for a couple seconds. And Sami Zayn took advantage. And he walked out of his home country of Canada, still the Intercontinental Champion. I can tell you right now, that is not going to be the same result this Saturday. This Saturday, Braun Breaker's walking in there, and he's walking out Intercontinental Champion. He's going to be focused for as long as he needs to be. He's going to counter everything that he needs to. He's going to hit... A massive spear. He might hit two or three spears. I think he's going to hit more than one. And he's going to walk in there with the Intercontinental Championship. I'm with it. Why not? Because let's be fair. Because let's be honest here. Anybody that beat Sami Zayn for that Intercontinental Championship is a huge accomplishment. Because we're talking about you beat the guy who beat the unbeatable. Because Gunther was unbeatable for a year and a half. So now we beat the guy who beat the guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Braun Breaker, Intercontinental Champion. You already know, man. Let's... As we go from the Intercontinental Championship to the United States Championship, Logan Paul comes home where he will defend the United States Championship. With whose game is it? With everybody saying L.A. Knight. Yeah. Logan, you got a home game. Logan Paul finally got a home game. He's going to be home in front of his friends and family. He's going to be feeling good. He probably going to have a crazy entrance. The problem is... He's going to lose in front of his friends and family. Because LA Knight's going to walk in there. And finally, it's a year and a half in the making. LA Knight will become a champion. The United States champion. So, so far, in these predictions, I got two title changes. I'm going to have a little more. We we, we going to have a little more. But... Right now, I got LA Knight walking out United States champion. Should be a very interesting match. I actually don't know how this match is going to go, but you already know Logan Paul is going to show up and show out because he's home. But I definitely got LA Knight winning. You already know, man. We here. Yeah. As we move from the United States championship to the women's title as the queen of the ring, Nia Jax will challenge Bailey for the women's championship. You know, I thought this match was clear, cut, simple, and easy, right? Nia Jax wins queen of the ring. She goes on to SummerSlam. She beats Bailey for the women's championship. Easy, right? Simple, a simple, 
wipe, wipe your hands with it, right? Simple. Now it gets complicated because Nia Jax becomes friends with Tiffany Stratton, who later on becomes money in the bank. So now we have to have in the back of our heads, is Tiffany Stratton going to cash in at SummerSlam? Now, Curvin, my number one fan, he wrote in the comments he didn't want Tiffany Stratton to cash in at SummerSlam, and I agree with him. I don't want to say I don't want it either, because it's, it's too soon. It feels too soon. Like there's a story you can make with this match, right? You can like Nia Jax could walk in, she could become the women's champion, right? And then. You got Nia Jax as women's champion. You got Tiffany Stratton as Miss Money in the Bank. And it could be like, you know, there could be so much foreshadow, right? To the point where Tiff could go like, oh, I'm not going to cash in on you. I'm going to cash in on the women's world champion, right? And then once Nia's focus is just not on, not on Tiffany, that's when Tiffany strikes and boom, she wins the women's title. The, the 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 thing with 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 that thought for me is I don't know when that's gonna happen because Triple H, Mr. Head of Creative, is a guy that likes to draw, have everything drawn out. Like he'll have something that's built that that will build for months and months and months. While I like that, I don't think every story should be that. So I think this should at least be drawn out for at least two months. I say at least two months. I'd say until, can we say Survivor Series? Like maybe Survivor Series? Actually, that's not two months. <laughs> it's like four. Listen, it's Survivor Series, cash in, boom, like something. But I know, but I want that. I'd rather her, I'd rather she cash in later and build up the story. Right, just catch Nia Jax slipping, and then boom, you you have a you have Nia Jax, Tiffany Stratton for the women's championship. You got that feud, boom, right. So I, I hope it goes like that. But I have Nia Jax walking out, walking out of SummerSlam, the women's champion. If Tiffany Stratton becomes the person, then I don't know. But I, if if you want if you want the story, if you want if you want a story, let it build, let it build, let it ride. Right, Nia Jax, our new women's champion. As we go from the queen of the ring and the women's championship to the king of the ring and the world heavyweight title, as Gunta, the ring general, will challenge Damian Priest for the world heavyweight championship. Now, I'm gonna be honest. I was the same way about this. Same way. Cut, dry, simple, right? Gunther wins King of the Ring. I had Gunther walking into SummerSlam, becoming the World Weight Champion. Now, I now I ain't gonna lie to you. I think Damian Priest was still gonna be World Weight Champion. That's one thing I'll say. But here he is. Now, here's my, uh, here's my thing about this match, right? So, there is a grand amount of people that kind of want Damian Priest to continue his title reign. And I get that because, you know, we still got the whole Judgment Day story, right? And the way that's looking, it looks like it's going to get drawn out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be drawn for damn near the rest of the year. But a lot of people want Damian Priest to still be World Weight Champion. I've been on the fence of Gunther winning because you got to look at it through this perspective, right? We're talking about Gunther here, right? We're, we're talking about Gunther. We're talking about a man that held the Intercontinental Championship longer than anybody in the company. Look, that Intercontinental Championship has been here since what? The 70s, the 80s? Within that time period? 
We had one reign that lasted for decades. Gunther won it in 2022, held it until WrestleMania of this year. Him becoming the longest reign in the Continental Champion. Sami Zayn had to do three halluva kicks to get that title off him. So what does he do after he loses the Intercontinental Championship? He walks into King of the Ring, walks into, walks into the King of the Ring tournament, dominates damn near everybody to get to the finals where he becomes the King of the Ring. And now he has a guaranteed world title shot at SummerSlam. You can't convince me that a man who's only been pinned three times in his six to seven year WWE career is going to lose. You can't convince me. I'm sorry. Gunther is what we like to call protected. He is protected. Like. I used to say this about Bobby Lashley. I said Bobby Lashley was protected. Hell, Drew McIntyre was protected. Brock Lesnar was protected. Gunther is protected. So, it's going to be hard for me. It's going to be hard to convince me to believe that a man who's been World Heavyweight Champion since WrestleMania, talking about Damian Priest, is going to pin Gunther. And if Damian Priest wins, it has to be dirty. It 100% has to be dirty. And that becomes my problem. And that's where my problem lies. Damian Priest has been champion since WrestleMania. He's only had three opponents. Jey Uso, Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre. All three of those matches, dirty finishes. Either dirty finishes or some type of interference. All of them. How is Damian Priest going to beat Gunther? And hell, hell, after what Gunther did on Raw to Finn Balor, you cannot tell me Damian Priest got a shot in hell. You can't tell me. You can't tell me Damian Priest got a shot in hell. You can't. So, I got Gunther winning. I got him walking out World Champion. I got him destroying Damian Priest. And then we could draw that story of Finn Balor versus... Actually, I'm trying to figure out how we're even going to do that. Actually, ah, damn, now that I think about it, hold on. Finn Balor did get destroyed by Gunther on Raw. If Damian Priest walks into SummerSlam beats Gunther, then Finn Balor could feel some type of way about that. And then, boom, that... The cracks start to the cracks start to show. Hmm. I guess we'll see. So that's an option, but I'm still sticking with mine. I got Gunther winning the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm sticking to it. You can't tell me nothing. I'm sticking to it. As we go from the World Heavyweight Championship and one member of the Judgment Day to the women's world championship and the other member of the judgment day as Rhea Ripley back in the ring for the first time in three months as she challenges Liv Morgan for the women's world championship Whew, boy this story has been one of the best stories of this has been one of the best stories of um, of the year. The Liv Morgan Revenge Tour. So Monday, uh, so the Raw after WrestleMania, Rhea Ripley gets attacked by Liv Morgan. Apparently to a point where Liv Morgan injures Rhea Ripley. The next week, Rhea relinquishes the World Weight Championship, I'm sorry, the Women's World Title. Off TV. Liv Morgan plots. She plots to get Dom. She plots to get Dominic and plots to get the women's world championship. So far, she's got the women's world title. She's been plotting to get Dom. Last week, 
Dom said he didn't want her. He didn't want nothing to do with that woman. Get out of my life. Liv Morgan walked to the back. Yams all out. Because <sighs> Liv Morgan had the yams out. For real. Yeet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They were out. She walked to the back. She was crying. Then this past Raw, she um she had a she had a promo, pretty much burning all of the Judgment Day stuff, everything like that because she pretty much um she redecorated the Judgment Day's um clubhouse. And she said she vows to beat Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship. So, so something can, something's gonna happen in this match. Something, and it's gonna involve Dominic Mysterio. I am on the mind that Dom is going to betray Rhea. I'm on that mind, and it feels that way. It feels like that's the road that we're taking. It feels like Dom is going to cost Rhea the world, the women's world championship. Liv's gonna retain. And then Dom and Rhea, I'm sorry, Dom and Liv just make out in the middle of the ring while Rhea's laid out. I feel like that's exactly what's going to happen. And then come Monday night, it's going to be all hell breaking loose. I promise. Hell is going to, hell is, yo, hell is going to open <laughs> on Raw. I promise you. So if you ain't, so if you ain't guessed by now, I got Liv Morgan retaining. I had Rhea, like, when Rhea came back. And then that match was set. I kind of had Rhea winning. But now that I thought about it. Dom could really change the complexion of this whole entire match. So I got I got Liv Morgan winning. With her and Dom celebrating in Cleveland. Probably getting booed the hell out that stadium. So yeah, I got Liv Morgan retaining. And then come Monday. Rhea's gonna beat everybody ass, and I'm gonna love every damn minute of it. Promise you. I got Liv Morgan retaining. We move on from the women's world title and one of the best storylines of 2024 to the best rivalry of 2024, and the only match to not have a championship defended. I'm talking about. The Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre, takes on the best in the world, CM Punk, with special guest referee, the visionary, Seth Rollins. I said it, and I 100% stand by it. This has been the best rivalry of 2024. The best. Bar none. This has started the Raw after the Royal Rumble. And it's literally continued every single week. We're talking about from January to August. Here we are. Now, I wonder if Drew McIntyre, if, if CM Punk never got hurt. Would this, would this rivalry have happened? Maybe. Actually, it's a maybe. I, I, I say a maybe. Because they got, because I'm thinking CM Punk would have probably won the Elimination Chamber, went on to WrestleMania, took on Seth Rollins for the World Weight Championship, probably beaten Seth Rollins for the world title. Punk would be champion. And then maybe, may, maybe if we got SummerSlam, it probably would have been CM Punk, Drew McIntyre for the World Weight Championship. Probably. Probably. Who knows? It's a big what if. But here we are. This got bloody. This got personal. And I loved every minute of it. <laughs> I love every minute of it. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. Out of every match on this card, this is the only one that I'm not sure of. I am not at all sure of how this match is gonna go. Even with Seth Rollins being in the match, I have no idea how it's going to go. Because the thing is this. Seth Rollins is neutral. He don't like neither one of them. So, so it's like, so now the question is, 
who does he not like more? I want to say he don't like CM Punk more than he don't like Drew McIntyre. I feel that way. Because with Drew, it, it's like a, it's more like a competitive hate. You know, they've had, they've had three matches in the span of two to three months. You know, Seth beat him twice, then Drew beat him at WrestleMania, right? So in a way, it's like, Seth's like, I don't like you because you beat me. I need to beat you now, right? He hates, Seth hates, Seth hates CM Punk. And that draws back to when he came back in November. You know that, and you know that infamous, uh, that infamous video of um, when CM Punk was out there and Seth Rollins was losing his mind. You know, Corey Graves trying to hold them back and whatnot. It's crazy. So, yeah, it, again, it goes back to who does Seth Rollins hate more? I don't think Seth is going to sway the decision. I don't think he get. Maybe he does get involved in a way. Maybe one of them hits Seth made by accident. Because I know, I know we're going to have a ref bump. I think that's... <laughs> I think... I think that's about as clear as day. Seth, Seth's HP as a ref is going to be like 25. <laughs> so you already know when he gets hit, he's going to be down for like 20 minutes. <laughs> you already know. So when he comes to, then he'll hit the person that probably ran into him. And then that will kind of be the result of it. And then maybe... Maybe... Maybe this continues at best with the Berlin, or maybe this continues at bad blood. I feel like at best this will continue at bad blood, depending on how things go. Maybe we have a triple threat at bad blood. I don't know, right? I don't know. But I already know Seth Rollins is going to have some type of, some type of involvement in the decision, even though he's the guy that's going to make the call. <laughs> I still feel like he's going to have some type of involvement. And again, I have no idea who wins this. I feel like Drew McIntyre wins this off the strength, right? Off the strength, I feel like Drew McIntyre wins this. CM Punk, who, by the way, is having his first match, his first one-on-one -on -one match since All In last year, and having and pretty much having his first match back in WWE since he came back in November. So, you know, this should be interesting. I'm actually going to see how Punk's body holds up. Hopefully, he doesn't get hurt. Um, Punk has shown that he can still wrestle. Definitely. So, I'm assuming it's going to be some ring rust, but it shouldn't be a lot of it. So, I think Punk should be all right. But I kind of have Drew McIntyre walking out the window. I kind of do. I, I don't know. It, it, feels like, it feels like Drew wins this. So, I'm going I'm to I'm stand on that. I got Drew McIntyre walking out the winner. And then Seth Rollins gets involved, and then we just set up something. Maybe we set up some bash at Berlin. I feel like at Bad Blood, this just turns to a complete triple threat. I don't know, but okay, we'll see. And with all that, we lead to the main event, which I believe will be the main event, as the WWE title will be on the line, as the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes takes on. The self-proclaimed tribal chief Solo Sokoa. This will be Solo's, I believe. No, it's not Solo. I'm about to say this is Solo's first match since Backlash. It's not. But Solo has not wrestled in a while. He has not wrestled in a while. So this is his first match back. As Cody Rhodes will defend the WWE Championship. Um, I kind of call this cut and dry too. I already know there's gonna be some type of shenanigans in this match. I feel like that's I feel like that's a given. You already know the whole bloodline is gonna be a part in some way. You already know Jacob Fatu is gonna be out there wrecking stuff. You already know. Um, I was gonna say the Tongas, but um, Tonga Lu is um his eyes. He hurt his eyes, so I don't know how much involvement he will have. But maybe Tama Tonga will get involved. 
But I already know the bloodline gonna get involved. Somebody's gonna get power bombed through a table. I already see it. <laughs> Something, something's happening. But the reason why I say this is the main event is because I feel like we may get some returns. I said at Money in the Bank that if Solo pins Cody, then it shows how much of a threat Solo can be to the American Nightmare and the WWE title. Solo did just that. He pinned Cody. He was the one that won the match for the team. He pinned the WWE champion. This marks this marks three, no, four times Cody Rhodes has been pinned since he made his return to WWE about two years ago. So to me, that's a big deal. To me, I think that's a very big deal. So now here we are. Now, as I said, I feel like there's some returns coming. Now, I don't want to speculate on the returns because I like to be surprised in my wrestling. I like to be shocked, you know, because it's hard to be surprised in this era of wrestling when there's so many news reports that will report so many things that it's like once you see something before you watch something, you're going to be sitting there like, man, I just hope it happens. I'm going to try my best to make sure I read nothing on Saturday. Nothing. But I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope something good comes out. I hope, I hope I enjoy myself. I hope this is a very good main event. It is going to be interesting to see how Cody and Solo work together. Um, I think Cody has shown he could probably work with anybody in the ring. So we're going to see how it goes. I got Cody retaining. I got Cody retaining and walking out the WWE champion. And then I already see a very big angle and a very big sum happening because once Cody wins, and then the bloodline attack from behind, then we get some massive returns where the, where the, what they call the Cleveland Stadium. Because I know that's where the Cleveland Browns play. I don't know what the stadium is called, but Cleveland will lose its mind. I know there's no roof, but if there was a roof, it would be blown off <laughs> after the returns happen. And we will be right, we will be back here talking about it and feel great about life. I, we will feel great about life. But all in all, I got Cody Rhodes winning. I got him retaining. And that's that. And that's SummerSlam in a nutshell for me. That's my prediction video. Uh, Saturday, I'm trying to figure out how Saturday's looking. Um... I might be late home. I might be late getting home. So, I'll, but I'll be able to watch it on Saturday. Um, you'll get my review late, later. I don't know what time. Can't really tell you right now. Just trying to figure everything out right now. But uh, it starts at 7. So, SummerSlam starts at 7. So, you know how all their PL, um, WWE, I guess WWE, WWE has pushed all their PLEs to 7 o'clock. SummerSlam has a three-hour pre-show I don't know but I know CM Punk got an interview and I think a couple people got interviews that's probably why it's three hours it is what it is I probably won't watch it but you already know it is <laughs> well until then it's been Rose man thanks for watching thank you for all the love and support as always you already know how we do and how we do it if you're new to the channel um I got my prediction videos right there to the left um I'm gonna have my reviews on the right and then you can subscribe right there. You see my face? Subscribe there. You already know what it is. So until next time, peace, love, wanted. Here.